What's happening guys, back at it again for another workout. Today's session is literally just going to cover shoulders. Again, uh, gonna reiterate myself, this uh, exercising of all these videos is literally to give you some form and technique advice, tips and tricks, uh, so you can pretty much implement it not only into, let's say a shoulder routine, uh, but pretty much any routine. You can pick and choose all the exercises that I do in my routines to even implement into your own routines, whether it be full body, three day splits, five day splits, Let's say you're just doing arms and I'm doing back and biceps, you just grab an exercise out of biceps because you like the exercise and I was giving you form advice and you know now how to do it. Uh, otherwise, you can literally copy the exercise as well. Cool? Stay tuned towards the very end, please, because I'm going to chuck in some real groovy exercises that are very uncommon um, and are going to absolutely blast the delts as well. Really cool exercises, really freaky. Uh, but they work really really well. I'll also post up uh, the whole workout So even if you wanted to do the entire workout follow it exercise to exercise set by set reps by reps um, It's gonna be right at the end so you can even take a screenshot at that as for now. Let's hit the gym Okay guys, so what I'm gonna start off with is just a bit of a warm-up So I'm gonna get some light dumbbells uh, and just go for some side raises so because I'm hitting uh, all of the shoulders, not just front, back, or whatever, uh, I'm going to be warming up all of them. I'd really advise doing this. You don't have to. I'm going to still do a warm-up on each individual exercise I do, like a light, uh, lighter weight, and then get some heavier weights happening. But I just like to get an overall uh, bit of a warm-up happening. All right, so the first exercise, or the proper exercise I'm going to go into is seated dumbbell shoulder press. Now, a crucial thing to take in with this one is your back now i've got a bit of a puffy jumper on so you can't see uh, but i'm really keeping in mind how uh, turned on my core is what i'm trying to do is keep my lower back fixed to the bench okay what you don't want is a massive arch right or at least uh, too much that you're actually disengaging your abs because you'll be hitting a different part of our goal of hitting a specific area on the delts uh, which is the medial delt the middle delts is what we want to be hitting all right so that was just a warm-up set and then we're going to go into the actual set now you'll find as soon as you start fatiguing look at what the first thing to go is it's going to be those abs all right so you actually find that you want to arch up a little bit uh, as long as you're still tensing those abs on keeping it conscious now what i usually do towards the end is i i might start fatiguing and i'll feel the abs going uh, and then I'll just push out one more and then stop there. I don't want to completely arch out and go completely out of whack. That's not what you want to do. All right, let's go into the next exercise. So upright rows, using no weight just to get the form happening. As you can see, I've got a little bit of a gap uh, from the front of my body. With weight, I usually keep it nice and close, but totally up to you. You can either go light and a little bit away from the body. You're going to hit more of the front delts or you can go nice and close to the body uh, if you're going to increase the weight. Uh, which is probably really obvious why you're doing that. The further it is away from you, the heavier it's going to feel because of uh, the middle of the axis and just the the angle. All right, so once you're done warming up, I think I'll do about 20 reps here without uh, any weight on, and then get some 15s happening just for a bit of weight. So again, this should almost apply for any exercise for that matter. The abs, abs must be turned on. Uh, keeping that back nice and neutral or as neutral as you can All right, so I've definitely been uh, In a place where I haven't actually been conscious of my abs It's so easy to forget especially when you're trying to up your weights all the time and go really heavy Alrighty straight over to military press or standing shoulder press with the barbell I usually like this one, you're in a bit more of a vulnerable position uh, with your back and this is where your abs really want to disengage, so really keep conscious of that. All right, so you should be able to keep your abs engaged and if you start feeling them fatigue or your lower back starts arching in, that means your delts are fatiguing and the rest of your body is trying to take over. So you can either stop or if you can still keep your abs engaged, just get your legs involved just a little bit to hoist up that uh, momentum. I might do it on the next one if you can see. Right, so I'll go a bit more with your legs, that's it. Okay, so still really trying to keep those abs engaged, all trying to hit the delts. Okay, so we're gonna go over to a rear delt row. Now the difference between a normal row and a rear delt row is the rear delt row is obviously the way I uh, specify it is hitting just the rear delts not the back 
Okay, so with a uh, normal row, we're actually squeezing the rhomboids together, pulling the shoulder blades all the way back. With this one, you're just moving the shoulders, all right? So you've got your scapulas and then your shoulders. We're just moving the shoulders, so we're just hitting the back of the delts. Right, so as you can see, my back isn't actually squeezing together. Bit of a better angle to see it from. Really just driving those elbows in nice and close. And just trying to get that burn happening on the back of the shoulders. It doesn't actually take too much, but it is a wicked burn when you actually get it going. <clears throat> so I am leaning right on my legs. Um, you can do it standing up, but depending on how well you can keep everything engaged, my back's nice and straight with this one, so I can really just focus on the rear delts. So maybe if it's your first time, just try sitting down first, really get uh, right over. So my chest is pretty much on my legs. Have a crack. Alrighty, going into an isolating lateral raise or side raises just with some dumbbells. Now the key with this one is really to keep that elbow up and the pinky side slightly angled up. Not too much. All this is doing is just avoiding hitting too much of the front delt or the front of the shoulder. What we're aiming for usually uh, is the medial delt or the middle of the shoulder. Alright, so you've got three heads on the shoulder, we're hitting the middle one. Right, now these are relatively light, so I chose to go light today just to hang them up a little more instead of going heavy uh, and getting a bit more momentum to it. So I just did a little bit slower. Um, I did get a bit more of a burn happening, which is good. So you can always alternate uh, depending on whatever program you're on. Now we're going to standing dumbbell alternating front raises. Uh, so the key with this one is really trying to keep the shoulder uh, that you're using back. Too often I see people swinging their shoulder into it and what you're doing is you're actually disengaging uh, or you're not squeezing as much necessarily. All right, so if you can either keep, imagine uh, lying on a brick wall or just you're against a brick wall, uh, don't let your back leave and just moving your arms up. Best way to get that front squeeze happening. Uh, my shoulders are in a little bit of a pain at the moment so Again, I chose to go light, just get that squeeze happening, and sometimes it's just good to go light anyway, just to make sure you actually find and engage all the muscle fibers in the muscle that you're actually trying to use. Really good way to increase strength, as weird as it sounds. You go lighter, squeeze the muscle more, so the way I like to look at it is you're not just using the muscle, you're actually feeling the muscle. This way you can engage a lot more muscle fibers, and then when, the time's to go, uh, when, when it's time to use the heavier weights, you're ready to go. Alrighty, now this is our groovy exercise I was talking about. You're literally just punching forward, all right, but not too fast because I don't want you to dislocate your shoulder. This is literally nice and slow. Uh, you're just squeezing the muscle by. Uh, it's like a different kind of front raise. We're actually hitting the front delt, all right, but we're actually moving in a different way. Uh, so we're going from almost still an activated point to the peak uh, contraction as if it was a front raise. Uh, it's a nice and slow with this one. Please do not go too fast. Um, if it's extremely light and you're just using it for boxing, then be my guest. But again, heavy weights at such a long distance away from your body uh, can get quite hairy. You know, as long as you've got control. So what you can do is actually go straight out and then you can actually start angling up if it's getting too heavy. So almost like a shoulder press. Uh, but this is more so an isolating exercise. Uh, so the tricep isn't engaging as much as if you were to go straight up. You can use it if you start fatiguing, almost like a drop set, if you will. Really cool one, really uncommon, but because it's so different, you'll most likely feel it in your first set. Let me know how you go if you actually end up using this one. On to the next one, we're doing rear delt flies. So remember, that angle that I was talking about before, we're actually trying to hit the rear delts and not the back. So same principle applies. You're actually just going for those rear delts, squeezing just the delts, not the back. All right, so you've got your shoulders and your shoulder blades. We're not squeezing our shoulder blades back, but we're uh, pulling our shoulders in the direction, making that fly. Just so you can see it from a different angle. Notice how my back's nice and straight. I'm not necessarily in a squat position, but I'm at least, oh, I'm probably past 45 degrees here. Sometimes people with every rep, they actually start standing up, so just be wary of that. Uh, but knees just a little bit bent so I can get some flexibility back to actually keep my back in that position uh, and just focus on those rear delts. 
As you can see, I'm swinging just a little bit, increasing momentum just so I can get those last few reps out. It's burning like crazy at the moment. Uh, but this is something you can do as long as that back's nice and straight and cause engaged. All right, another freaky dicky one is our pretty much side extensions, quite similar to a lateral raise in terms of muscle activation. Uh, in terms of movement, completely different. But we're ending up at the same point as the peak contraction as a lateral raise, but we're starting out uh, with the dumbbells at our chest and our elbows up as if we were doing the side raise. All right, so again, those elbows must be pointing up and the finished position on each side, uh, you wanna get the same position again as that lateral raise. So pinky side up, elbows up. Um, as you can see, I'm probably increasing the pace here. They are burning like crazy. A really cool one. Uh, again, if you do increase the pace, just be wary. You're, you're, the dumbbell is on a very long uh, lever. So the risk for doing some damage is a lot higher. So just please be careful. And even if it is just towards the end, I'd advise just uh, starting out with a lower weight to make sure you can actually keep it controlled at the very start. And if you really have to, uh, increase the pace just to it towards the end, not the entire workout or the entire set, should I say. And that's that one. Let me know you go with that one. Last but not least, finishing up with the rear delts. Again, I always like to do compounds at the start and then finish up with all the isolating exercises, hitting each head uh, individually. Now this is a machine fly, usually for the pecs, uh, but I'm choosing to do uh, rear delts with it. So hopefully your gym, wherever you go, if it's hammer, good stuff. Uh, but really try to find something that, you can either use cables or even a machine. If it's a machine, a little bit better because you can isolate it a little more. Again, remember that squeeze, same principle applies. We're not trying to squeeze the back, we're just trying to hit the back of the shoulders. So not moving the shoulder blades back, just the shoulders. It actually decreases the range of movement. So if you go too far back, it's just going to be a given that you actually contract your back together. Uh, that's just the, the nature of the exercise. So try not to go too far. It may mean even increasing the weight a little bit, but just to start out, just to see if you can actually get it burning, maybe do heaps of reps. As soon as you actually can feel it, uh, it's pretty hard to lose. Uh, so as soon as you start activating it, it's pretty easy to keep. That is it for today, guys. Uh, here is the workout if you want to follow it step by step, or you just wanted to know the name of it and how many uh, sets, reps I was doing. Uh, but feel free to take a screenshot of that and implement it into your training week. Please let me know how you go. And if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Enjoy, guys. I'll see you in the next video.